More legal trouble for Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice. Have you seen a guy throw away his future like Rasheed Rice has in the last few weeks, allegedly, um, after a great rookie year, capped off with um, you know a Super Bowl, becoming the number one wide receiver, and here he is, weeks after he's driving his Lambo 120 miles an hour on a Dallas freeway, he's a suspect in an alleged assault that took place at a Dallas nightclub earlier this week, reportedly involving a photographer, Kevin Keatsman is on it. His podcast, Kevin Keatsman Has Issues, dropping weekdays, of course. Always a, appreciate his time on KCMO Talk Radio, 95.7 FM. All right, Kevin, uh, what do you make of this latest story involving Rasheed Rice, and what does it mean for him and his future with the Chiefs, if anything? Great to be with you, Pete. Thanks for having me. This is all too familiar for Chiefs fans and the Kansas City Chiefs organization. So, yeah, I've seen guys throw their careers away, but the NFL, if you're talented, won't let you throw your career away unless they lock you up in jail and keep you from playing. Remember, Charles Amenahue last year missed the first six games with the Chiefs because he beat up his girlfriend. A couple years prior before that, Frank Clark was here after back-to-back felony gun charges in gang-related areas in south-central Los Angeles, and he kept playing. Tyreek Hill had a long laundry list of bad things that he did and continues to do, and he keeps playing in the NFL. The NFL doesn't care. If you're not in jail, they'll suspend you a few games and say, we did our part, you're not in jail. We're not taking any sort of a stance about society or actually fixing anything. Last offseason, wasn't it that Tyreek Hill beat up some boat dock worker? He went and rented a boat and was, was accused of assault by a boat dock worker. What happens is the agent gets a hold of the alleged victim, a payoff is made, no charges are brought, and that's the end of that. My suspicion in the latest for Rasheed Rice here is if, if, and it's a big if, if, he punched or pushed some sort of photographer in a nightclub in Dallas and injured that person and sent him to the hospital, the lawyers have already contacted the man offering him money to not press charges. And when that happens, these things just go away like they never happened because there's no charge brought. So we'll see. The Dallas police may be different. Tyree, um, I'm sorry, Rasheed Rice is already in trouble with the Dallas police because of the police wreck or the car wreck that he was involved in. There are up to eight different counts that he's been charged with in that. That's a very serious crime. And a lot of people think he's going to miss at least half the season this year for the Chiefs. But this latest one is very typical in the NFL of a player basically just paying their way out of something like this. Yeah, uh, excellent points there, Kevin Keatsman on KCMO. You know, I'm looking at it too and I'm saying there's some people, there's some reaction yesterday on social media saying, well, this is it. We're done with Rasheed Rice. Well, hold on. Uh, You're telling me you weren't done with him driving a Lamborghini 120 miles an hour and putting people at risk, allegedly. But now he might have hit a photographer and that's your last straw. I mean, I'm sorry, but um, the Lamborghini thing is much more concerning than what happened this week, apparently. It's night and day. I agree with you 100 percent. He could have killed people racing Lamborghinis and Corvettes at 150 miles an hour, whatever they were. He easily could have killed people. And I'm not one of these people that says, look, we only look at the law as the result of the crime. So if he had killed somebody doing that, um, Rasheed Rice would be going to jail for a long time, vehicular manslaughter. There's no question that would be happening. They didn't, and nobody was seriously hurt, which is a blessing. But it's still the same crime. It's public endangerment. You could have killed a child. You could have killed anybody doing that. The incident in the nightclub could be anything from a paparazzi in his face trying to make a couple hundred bucks from TMZ, getting pushed and falling down and claiming they were hurt, to a real incident where he beat somebody up. We just don't have the details on it at this point and don't know. But the fact that it's a photographer, if that's a professional photographer, I think people will look at that differently than than like somebody in the club trying to take his picture or trying to take a selfie and he gets a fight with somebody. We don't know. The answer is we don't know at this point. But the Dallas nightclub incident that allegedly occurred does sound one like it, it could be cleaned up by the Chiefs fixers. What does this mean, Kevin? We know Andy Reid has a history of, you know, taking chances on guys. And you've alluded to some of them um, throughout the draft, throughout his entire career, going back to Philadelphia. Rasheed Rice did have some personal red flags before the draft last year. Uh, Does the culture of the Chiefs right now with Andy and Mahomes and everybody else, does it trump and allow this team to take some chances on guys like Rasheed Rice and say, listen, we think that our culture can override whatever red flags they have, and keep these guys in line. Is that a smart strategy for the Kansas City Chiefs right now? Well, it's been Andy Reid's strategy his whole career. Remember, he drafted Tyreek Hill very controversially long before he ever won a Super Bowl, Mm -hmm. Andy Reid did. So he's always done this. He did it in Philadelphia. And, you know, I used to say, and I was wrong, it's taken me a few years to figure this out, 
I used to say Andy Reid thinks he can fix people, that he's the coach and he can fix them. That's not true. Let me be very clear about this. Andy Reid doesn't care. It's a numbers game with him. It's all statistics. He figures if he takes 10 guys that are troubled, only two of them will get in trouble. The rest will come play, and other teams don't want those players. Let me read you a passage that's circulating on the interwebs now after this latest with Rasheed Rice. This is a report that came out before the draft, before the Chiefs drafted Rasheed Rice. This is an NFL report, and it says Rasheed Rice has the size, speed, and athletic ability in production to be a high draft choice. At least one team, however, has removed him completely from their draft board because of behavioral issues. The personnel director said, quote, Rasheed Rice is talented, but he is not a good dude, unquote. Well, that's a green flag for the Chiefs. They love that when other teams aren't on a player, and they will take a player like that every single day. It is their standard operating procedure. They don't think they'll fix them. They think they will just stay out of jail and be eligible to play, and they love having great players. He is uh, Kevin Keatsman. His show, Kevin Keatsman Has Issues, drops every single morning wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Kevin, I've got to ask you, I know they've cooled off a little bit here, losing three of four, but... The Royals are, in many ways, the toast of this town right now. Now, the AL Central is much better than most people expected it to be. But um, the Royals were a month plus into the season. How excited are you about this team and where you think this team could be headed this year? Well, they're really fun to watch night in and night out. Starting pitching's been great. Two of the last three games, including last night, James McArthur, who is the de facto closer because Will Smith was the closer earlier this year and he lost his job very early because he blew a couple of saves. MacArthur's now blown saves on Sunday and Tuesday, and it's an ugly look because he's not a power pitcher. He doesn't come out and throw a lot of fastballs and blow you away. He sits there and nibbles with curveballs, and if, if listeners don't know this, most breaking pitches are not strikes, okay? You're trying to fool the hitter to swing at a ball that's going to wind up out of the strike zone. And MacArthur was just, he walked, he had a two-run lead and a man on base in the ninth inning with two outs, and he walked a batter and put the tying run on base. Then he gave up a three-run homer, and the Royals lost by a run. You just you can't do it. You have, if you're going to pitch in the eighth and ninth inning in Major League Baseball, you have to go at the hitters and be a strike thrower. They've got a reliever, a left-hander named Zerpa, that has been very good so far this year. And he looks to me like he doesn't look like a typical closer. He's not a big, tall dude or anything like that. But he goes right at guys. He's left-handed. That's not ideal for a closer. But I think they may have to give him a shot. This is bullpen right now, trial and error. It is the weakest spot of the team. They continue to get leads through good starting pitching and timely clutch hitting, and they're blowing games late. That's at least five games they've blown late. I think they're 21-16 and 16 or something hmm. like that right now. Imagine what their record would be if they haven't blown all these games in the eighth and ninth inning. Wow. I didn't realize that. Kevin Keatsman, you learn something every day from him. We always appreciate his time on KCMO. 95.7 FM. You are the man, Kevin. Thank you for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon, and we'll be listening, my friend. Thanks, Pete. Have a great day. You as well. Great job, as always, with uh, our friend Kevin Keatsman on 95.7 FM.